morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. It is the third Sunday after Pentecost. We welcome you to our Good Hope Lutheran worship service. If you're joining us by Facebook or you are gathered here in our sanctuary today, we welcome you and we want you to feel at home. Uh, we have a lot of guests today because we are celebrating a baptism and it is a wonderful day in the church when we baptize Jevin Andrew Metzger, son of Morgan and Justin Metzger. And we are so very happy to have all of you here today. And um, we are all witnesses to this celebration. We also have a celebration that we are bittersweet about because Jean and Betty Luthart will be traveling to a new place another journey on their way uh, sharing God's good news uh, and we are so very thankful for everything they have given to us and so there is a reception following in the auditorium uh, so that you can wish them well and and make sure you get their new addresses so we can keep up to date with everything that's going on we have a new opportunity we are having adult vacation Bible school along with the children's vacation Bible school I am teaching it. It is on the same times that your kids are here, uh, and we hope that you all sign up. There is no age limit, uh, and I will make sure that you have a great time at Vacation Bible School if you come in with that attitude. So uh, we will learn a lot of new things together, and you know, in summertime, it's a good time to just refresh and renew our spirits with Jesus Christ. I would like to call up Randy Fisher, our council president. He has a presentation to make. Good morning. Here comes Betty and Jean. We, uh, as the pastor, we are going to miss you and we want to uh, leave you with a couple things that you will remember us by. Uh, <clears throat> you could rattle, I could be here all morning rattling off all the things that they have done uh, for the church and for the community. Uh, there's probably hardly anything that, that hasn't gone on at either one of the two of them or both of them have been involved with. So, first of all, for your new house, uh, we, we want to give you uh, this beautiful clock <laughs> that uh, is engraved with uh, Betty and Jean, your devotion to God, your church, and, all, and community will always be remembered, your Good Hope family. So there's that. You're going to have to put it back down there uh, because <laughs> we're going to do it again the second service. <laughs> and then <clears throat> this is a photo of the, well, of the, of the steeple and signed by a number of your friends and family. So it's going to be, yeah, don't, don't, don't tear up. <laughs> um, but we want to we wanna thank you. Um, and, and you're always welcome back here, of course. And just thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you've done. So, I have a second duty. Uh, I want to call your attention to an important item in the bulletin. At last week's meeting, uh, church council voted to recommend that the congregation call Vicar Tancy Addison as Good Hope Senior Pastor. Therefore, there will be a special congregational meeting Sunday, July 10th at 940, right after this service for the purpose of voting to call Vicar Tansy to be Good Hope's senior pastor. This will be the only agenda item, so hopefully it'll be a short meeting. All members are welcome. If you cannot attend this meeting, absentee voting will be available in the church office Wednesday, June 29th through Friday, July 8th during no more working hours. Okay, so Sunday, July 10th, after this service in the auditorium, and we're gonna vote to have her be with us forever. <laughs> Thank We begin our worship with a moment of silence to prepare our hearts. 
and to pray for a world of peace. Amen. Will you please stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. We sing, Change My Heart, O God. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We sing.
Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you, and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful in the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your path through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from the first chapter, the 19th verse of first, of first Kings. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel, king over Aram. You shall also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Meloha, as prophet in your place. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were 12 yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the 12th. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. Word of God, word of life. Thanks to God. Today we'll re we will read responsively Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their name upon my lips. O oh Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because God is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your holy seed see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Today's second reading is from Galatians chapter 5. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, 
drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I have warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Word of God, word of life. I invite the children up for a children's sermon. a seat. So nice to have you here today. Um, I'll have everybody say their names so you can introduce yourself. Go ahead. Yes, uh, we are happy to have you today. Our Blue Pig, we collect money and we support Jasmine in, um, in her life. And so it helps us remember other people that are far away from us. We have some people that are going to be moving away from us. And so I know you've already seen them once and I told them they were coming down for children's sermon. So would Jean and Betty come down for children's sermon? <laughs> you know that you have to be honored in so many different ways. So for you, Jean and Betty are like grandparents of the entire church. I would say that way. Jean, has served on the staff here at Good Hope, and he has prayed for people, he has preached and proclaimed the word, he has shared the good news and visitation, he has always been a supporter of everyone who needed a little bit of help. Um, and so we will definitely miss you, but we are so thankful for that. And Betty, she is the person you see everywhere. Did you see her in Sunday school? Did you see her in Bible school? Have you seen her in bells, in the bell choir, in the choir, in the newsletter, uh, preschool? Uh, I know I'm, I'm missing some, but my point is she has lived a life of sharing. Jean and Betty both have. So today's uh, lesson that we just read that said all these terrible things of that we should avoid, um, I knew they had to do a lot of packing, and I've been talking to them for a long time. So. Um, Carter, I'm going to let you, can you pick this up and carry it over there for me? Is it heavy? It's heavy. Lane, would you like to pick it up? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty heavy, isn't it? Chase, would you like to pick it up? Tell me if you think it's heavy. Oh, yes, it's pretty heavy. And how about you, Jordan? <laughs> okay, you're just going to take the word on it. Well, you see, I think that suitcase that is so heavy is a perfect way to describe what Paul is trying to say to the Galatians. When you weigh yourself down with all of these bad things, you know, the self things that you put on uh, yourself and you have these heavy burdens in your life, it's really hard to move through life carrying all those troubles. Uh, but instead, we should pack our hearts with the fruits of the Spirit. And now I know that Jean and Betty have packed our hearts with the fruits of the spirits while they're there, and they are going to be packing it uh, with everyone they meet in the days ahead as they move to a new community. So uh, as I say all of these things, I want you to take your hand and I want you to put them in your heart because when you have these in your heart, you travel light and you're ready to help anybody. You don't have to drag around a suitcase that's full of things that will hold you back. Okay, so you go love. Everybody say it after me. Love, love. Joy, joy, peace, peace. Patience. patience, kindness, kindness. Goodness. goodness, faithfulness, faithfulness. Gentleness. gentleness, and self-control. Self and when you put that in your heart, 
every morning when you wake up, that's what you're supposed to pack yourself with. So that when you come to things that may distract you or tempt you, you choose this, not this. And we know that is the gift that you have shared with us over these years, and you've shared throughout your life, and you still will be sharing. And so as sorry as we are to have you not be in our presence every Sunday or throughout the week, we know that God has big plans for you, and you will be sharing those everywhere you go. And we just love you, and our hearts are filled with you and everything you packed us with. So let's give them a big round of applause. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the gifts that you gave us. May we share them and always be ready to go. In your name, amen. All right, well, uh, Carter, I'm going to ask you to move that back over there for me. Thank you. <laughs> and you guys can go back to your seats as, oh, the gospel acclamation. Uh, yes, we have to sing. You can go back to your seats, <laughs> unless you want to. <laughs> According to St. Luke, the ninth chapter, verses 51 through 62. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered the village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and we have our special music today offered by Greg Shifley. Thank you. 
Thank you, Greg. What a beautiful uh, melody that you played to us today on that beautiful brass instrument. It's always a joy to hear your talent just given up to God. Thank you for sharing. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When you look at your body, you realize that your heart is right in the center. Everything depends on your heart, how the blood blows in and goes out. And when it's not working, you're out of tune. When you think about your life centered around Jesus Christ, everything goes in smoothly, comes out joyously. And when you're not centered in Jesus Christ, your life gets all messed up, out of tune. That is what this gospel lesson is telling us today. And it is a harsh rendition that we sometimes don't like to listen to. We like to think that we can just do whatever we want in this world, but Jesus is calling and making it very clear the cost of discipleship. So as we're going through the gospel today, I hope I can shed some light onto it and make us reflect on ourselves on how we can be in Christ every day of our life. When it says that Jesus set his face to Jerusalem, well, that's a funny way to say that he is focused on his walk to Jerusalem. When you set a face uh, in that time period, that just meant the presence is there. Your face is the presence of where Jesus is, sit, er, is headed to Jerusalem. And we all know why Jesus is headed to Jerusalem, but at that time, the disciples did not. And their way could have gone around Samaria, and sometimes they did because the Sumerian people and the Jewish people did not get along. Can you imagine that? People not getting along or having differences. But Jesus chose to go right through Samaria this time. And he sent messengers ahead, which means this has been done before. But you see the difference is Jesus' eyes were set to Jerusalem and the Jewish people believed that's where all things happened. The Sumerians did not believe that's where it all happened. They had another place that they would focus on. So when the messengers come back to Jesus and they say, they don't want you here. And they're mad. How could you not want Jesus there? James and John, they're fired up. And they said, let, just let the fire come down on them. Do you want us to do that for you, Jesus? And Jesus says, no. That's not how we do things. Nonviolence, loving your enemies, we'll just go a different place. And so they did. And then a man comes up and says, I'll follow you. Well, we always think that's wonderful. That sounds good to us. But Jesus has a strange way of replying this. Foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the Son of God has no place to lay their head. Well, what is he saying? He's telling the man, yes, I want you to think about it if you are going to follow me because it's not going to be that real comfort cruise ship kind of ride. You might be out in a lifeboat for a while, paddling away, fearing for your life, suffering a little bit. It's not going to be that easy kind of life that's filled with only the good things. When you follow Jesus, you're brought to a lot of different situations where you have to choose how you're going to respond. That's the cost of discipleship. So no revenge, no comfort. And then another one says, I'll follow you, Jesus, but first I have to go bury my father. Now, you might think, how could Jesus say no to that? And Jesus doesn't mean that you aren't supposed to take care of the people you love. For a Jewish tradition was to always take care of your elders and to bury your family, absolutely. Instead, what Jesus is saying here is, you have to put me first in, on top of everything else in your life. The kingdom can't wait 
for all of the excuses that we have that will make us take a step back. Again, another one comes along and says, I need to say farewell. And Jesus is very strong in saying, no, if you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. And we understand this more because we know what happened at the resurrection. Again, these people didn't. But when Jesus is on that cross, what is his view? Jesus had no wealth. He had no reputation that was honorable at that time. He was fully humiliated by the terrible death on a cross in front of everyone. He had no friends that stood beside him. It was certainly a suffering event. And what Jesus is saying to us in this gospel is, I challenge you to follow me. And I'm telling you, it's not going to be easy, but it will be filled with everything in your life that will give you abundance. But you have to let go of everything that pulls us away from the center of that beautiful heartbeat of Jesus that keeps us going, that gives us everything we need to, lead, to live a good life of abundance. Jesus meant it for the disciples of the day, and he's meaning it for us today and for the disciples to come. And how beautiful it is that today at Good Hope Lutheran Church we are baptizing because that is how Jesus says, this is how you follow me. I will give you everything you need because you can't, as humans, not desire the flesh. And so I will take care of you. I won't reject you. I will make you my own. I have chosen you. I have chosen you to be my child, and I will give you the strength and the power of everything you need in your life to be good. And when you fail, I'm right there with you, walking with you, encouraging you, lifting you up with other believers so that you can stay on that path of righteousness. That is the promise of baptism. And that is the joy of being here today to witness this little boy entering the kingdom of God, being part of the body of Christ here at Good Hope Lutheran Church. In the Galatians reading that I talked about in children's sermon, it's saying we do have freedom. The Gentiles and the Jews were having a difficult time during that time trying to figure out, well, what does it mean to follow Christ? Do I have to give up everything? And Jesus says, no. Paul says, this is what giving up the world looks like. It's freedom from the judgment and doing whatever you want with no concern for your neighbor. It's giving up, gaining at another's ex expense while others suffer and you thrive. It's giving up this lustful, prideful, sexual immorality. Instead, baptism is giving you the freedom for filling the world with more love, more peace, more joy, more caring, sharing what you have and seeing the other person smile when you share it with them. And it's all one unit. That fruits of the Spirit isn't definitely just one or the other. It's all of those things together. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And that all goes together, and that is what God gives us, a limitless way to live. And you can never give enough of the fruits of the Spirit away. So as we see this little boy baptized, as we say goodbye to some really faithful friends, we know that there is more to give. There's more to come. There's more to share in this world when we don't focus on ourselves and we center our lives on Christ. I think a perfect vision of this is the story of Michelangelo, that famous artist, the sculptor, who always said, that when he looked at a hunk of marble, he could see the beauty in it. That's how Jesus sees you. And a sculptor 
just chisels away at all the things that keeps us from being who God made us to be. Michelangelo said, when I saw the angel in the marble, I carved it until I could set it free. That's what Jesus does every time we are reminded of our baptism. The waters flow over us, clean us away, restore us, renew us in that spirit that leads us through Christ into the world. That's what you pack your heart with. Always focusing that it is what we have in our hearts that guide us. In those times, you have to be prepared. How are you going to respond? Always choose the fruits of the Spirit. That won't guide you wrong. Don't count on yourself. Stay in Jesus' name and witness to the other people in this world that you know how to do that. In Christ, with Christ, coming every Sunday to worship and to fall on your knees and confess, I know I'm a sinner, God, and I thank you for the grace and gratitude you have given to me so that I can share it with my neighbor. And every morning, may you wake up and say, Lord, today I am reminding myself I am completely forgiven. And I am yours to face this world, to walk with you a little closer, to share your love. Amen. <laughs>
You may be seated as we continue with the baptism and you are invited to follow along on page 227 in the front part of the red hymnal. We gather in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your son baptized into Christ? As you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, bring him to the word of God in the Holy Supper, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture him in faith and prayer so that your child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in the Christian faith and life? People of God, do you promise to support Jevin Andrew and pray for him in his new life in Christ? We do. Please stand. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, I say, I, I, if so, say I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? <coughs> Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led the people of Israel from slavery into freedom. And at the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Okay. Jevin Andrew. I baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> and of the Son, <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, I'll give that to you. You belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, we, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Jevin Andrew with the gift of your Holy Spirit, 
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Jevin Andrew, child of God, you have been sealed <laughs> by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Let us welcome Jevin. And we will be introducing Jevin to you as we sing Warning Cry. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. God of faithfulness, set the face of your church family firmly on you. Rooted in your self-giving love, may the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. God of gentleness, strengthen the earth's ability to heal. Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. Where there are destructive fires, bring rain. Protect homes, habitats, 
and livelihoods threatened by climate disasters. God of peace, guide all who govern that they place the good of their citizens above self-promotion. Anoint leaders of nations with your spirit of neighborly love. Protect refugees and all who live under tyranny or conflict. God of kindness, reveal your healing presence to all who are sick or dying, especially Marilyn Gebhardt, Chuck Wireman, Kay Pfeiffer, Chuck Scott, Reggie Berg, Connie Smith, Amy Eastman, Marge Bodenot, Mike Colley, Miriam Everts, Ruth Lady Pollock, Carol May, Bob Norris, Christina Oakes, Riley, Heidi Walton, Marion Smith, and Jess and Anita Spiegel. We ask you to pray for all who come, whose name are in our hearts today. Uphold those who grieve. Support the needs of any who are unemployed, hungry, or have nowhere to lay their heads. God of love, attend to those struggling with addiction, depression, or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems and loving companions as they work toward health, that they may rest in hope and know the fullness of joy in your presence. We lift in our prayers our newly baptized Jevin Andrew Metzger, his parents and his sponsors. May they feel your abiding presence as this child grows stronger in faith throughout his life. May we be the supporting witnesses of this baptism, modeling God's almighty love. God of joy, we give thanks for all who have died and now celebrate the inheritance of life in you. Keep their examples of faithfulness always before us, that we trust your promises in life and in death. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share the peace of the Lord.
prayer. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Our communion is open to all baptized believers. You will come up in two rows and receive the elements and go back to your pews and we will commune together at the end. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet.
the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. feel comfortable holding the person's hand next to you, I invite you to do so. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. People of good hope, we are grounded in faith, gathered in love, and sent with a purpose so that others may gain the kingdom. We sing, lead me, guide me. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.